Hello and welcome to this video where I have been asked to um, talk about how I use my Icon Platform Nano and my user experience with it in Cubase. Stay tuned. So basically what I'm going to do today is to share my experience using the Icon Platform Nano with Cubase. Um, the installation process is quite straightforward. Uh, forward, you buy the product, you follow the instructions and download whatever it says you have to download. Uh, and, and I found those instructions quite clear so it shouldn't be easy to, to misunderstand and and uh, make mistakes. Uh, I think it was very clear so I, I, I will not cover that here. Um, but I will cover more kind of user experience related stuff. So basically when, when you have selected your door and you have installed it, you use this thing that is called an overlay uh, and you ch look at the, the software, in this case Cubase Nuendo, uh, and you just place it on here. And basically there, there you have the instructions for how to use it in your door. Um, there are, uh, if we look at the website, you can access uh, all the overlays uh, as a PDF. Um, you have one for Logic Pro, you have one for Samplitude, Live, Pro Tools and so on. So uh, quite some uh, selection. So for instance, if, if you're thinking about buying this product, I suggest you go to the overlay uh, PDF document that you can find on the Platform Nano website under Downloads right at the bottom there platform nano overlays and just see that your door is covered I, it probably is but it's always wise to check so back to my cubist window and basically this is how it works you have a standard control uh, where you have a couple of controls that kind of is the same for everything and then you have these four buttons that changes according to use. And in this sense, you have a red layer, you have a green layer, blue, purple, and yellow layer. So to find your way to the overlay map, you simply look at the color. So if you have the red layer, the red instructions apply. So flip, read, write, sense, edit, project, mixer, motors, and so on. Uh, if you go to the blue layer, the blue one uh, applies. The name value, left, right, punch, 70 beat, uh, previous add, next, and so on. Uh, so that's basically the the, the, the layers that you have. Um, one, one of the things that, that we will come back to uh, is that I really like this product. I really find it helping my workflow, but there are a few a few minor cons. Uh, one is that it can be hard to figure out because um, it sends MIDI to your door and that MIDI information is not made accessible by, by ICON. Uh, and uh, I've been in touch with the with the uh, support team and didn't get much enlightenment there either. Uh, so, what, what what we then need to know to to know more about this product? It requires a little bit of media media knowledge and media engineering or whatever you want to call it. But uh, with Cubase, it uses the the Mackey control. Uh, 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 protocol. So I found this wonderful person who has mapped these out in a document. I will add the link in the uh, uh, in, in the description below the video uh, on YouTube. Uh, but basically here you can see uh, all the instructions. So channel 1, uh, C-sharp 1, uh, we find our door, which in this case is Steinberg. Uh, then we see that that is select number two, channel number two, select channel number three, and so on. So basically, uh, when we wonder what function 
something has, we can use this map to kind of investigate and try to find out what it actually means for our door. The next question then is, how do we get this information? If I press this button, how do I know what control it sets off? Well, uh, when you download the products, you also download the Platform Nano IMAP Control Center. So this is basically your controller with the media, in media note information it sends and uh, controller lane uh, information and so on. So in this case, I have selected the Mac mode, which is the one I use for Cubase. Uh, but you have a different one for Logic Pro, Pro Tools, or you can make your own. Um, and if you use the Define, you can change uh, the controls and so on. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to go into that here uh, for two reasons. One, it will take a lot of time uh, and the video will become too long. And, and the second one is that I haven't felt the need to do it because I, I think this covers my need, especially since I additionally have my Touch OSC controller where, where I have all my specific commands um, more clearly written out. Because my, my experience, you can control this yellow layer and I will show you later on. Uh, and you can select um, user defined uh, presets and so on. But the problem for me uh, with my kind of personal memory is that when it doesn't say on the label um, what function it is, I, I won't remember it. Uh, and also adding tape here and, and writing my own instructions, which is kind of cluttered and uh, yeah, the, 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 the pen smeared out and or I can see here or uh, whatever. So basically I, I prefer this one that I can personalize uh, as much as I want, but I, I will show you how to do it if you want to do it. Um, so, uh, but basically here, if, if you then wonder uh, what does this button do in the purple layer, you select layer four, which correspond to the purple one, and you find the button, this one, so that is C sharp five, and then you can go to this document and then you find C sharp five. So C sharp three, C sharp five, there it is. And back to Steinberg where it says revert. And that also corresponds to the label, revert. So that, that is one way of kind of doing the investigative work to, to get the most out of this control because you want to, to my experience, I, I won't say that that is always the case, but in, in my experience and according to my Google searches, you won't get much help from Icon. Uh, so, so that's kind of some of it for me. Uh, with this done, uh, I will close this down and we will go to Cubase. Uh, I'll just go back to the there. So in Cubase, what we do is we open the studio setup. And in the studio setup, we choose Mackie control. Uh, if you don't have it here, you can press add and select Mackie control. Then this will pop up. This will kind of implement the, the very doc, uh, document we saw here. Uh, all these commands will be implemented in addition to some extra selectables that we can choose ourselves, user defined. And those are found on the yellow label. But before we can do anything of this, we need to select the input. So media input platform nano V110 in my case. And we must also select the output because this is a motorized fader, uh, which means that it will move according to the product. So Cubis also needs to send information back to the controller. So, so it understands what you're doing and so on. So both needs to be done here. I have experienced if I 
unplug the USB cable when working or, or between projects or something like that, that it kind of gets messed up and the, the information gets wrong. Uh, but basically what I do then is I just go back here, press reset, um, and then uh, usually it works. Uh, but well, so I, I've, I haven't had much trouble with it uh, in that sense, but occasionally it, it gets confused and then I just plug it out, plug it in, reset and, and done. Just like your Wi-Fi in a sense. Uh, so here we can choose uh, what we want to do. Uh, F1 corresponds to the yellow label, first button, F2, F3, F4, F5, 6, 7, and F8. Um, and then you can select, I'm talking about this more in detail in a different video on how to use macros and uh, logical editors and so on in, in this section here. Uh, but basically here we can just um, know that uh, it will work fine with, with uh, whatever we need here. Uh, just going to add some power to my computer because it's soon going to die soon. Okay, so back again. Um, when we have done our installations here, we can then access, for instance, if I now press that button, I will open Workspace 1. If I press that button, I will open Workspace 2 and so on. You will also see that you have user A and user B. Those are two additional functions. Uh, and basically you find them back here. This is just some uh, quarter of an inch uh, jacks. Uh, and those are made for pedals, for instance. So in, in this sense here, I've added a, just a standard foot pedal uh, from a, a guitar speaker I had once, um, which means that you, you get an extra button. So if I press this one, I execute this function, basically. Um, so for instance, if you, if you have stuff you want to do, be able to do while you play the piano, for instance, and both your hands are in use, then you can add this and, and control uh, that function you wish to use. Uh, with your foot, for instance. Um, yeah, that's basically it. So, um, let's go to the layouts of this thing. We have a couple of sections here. I'm going to go to the default. Uh, we have a motorized fader that will uh, be synced to the door. Uh, we have a couple of pan pots this one uh, is kind of, uh, this section here is kind of for the channel strips. Um, here you have the transport section and here you have kind of the command section and the layers. Uh, you have a display here, we, we can get some very restricted information. Um, you, you could add a, a kind of an, an additional um, display that you can place here uh, but yeah I haven't done so uh, I haven't found it necessary enough because I have the information on my computer instead um, so basically uh, we have a, a jog here where we can um, control different stuff for instance, if I press this one, uh, we will be able to jog up and down between the channels. Uh, we have an enter function by just pressing the button down. Uh, if I take this one, the horizontal button, I can, I'm going to go up so it's easy to see. I can go horizontally between stuff. Uh, and on the other side, we have a similar zoom, so a vertical zoom and a horizontal zoom. And to me, these functions here is enough on its own. For me, I, I, I really like them and I use them a lot. 
especially when working with with big projects of 150 trucks and so on uh, it's very good just to be able to quickly maneuver back and forth um, so that's basically it on select we have a record enable button um, I'm going to where you can see in the door that it's in and out um, we have this master button if this is pressed in I control the the master fader if it's not I control the selected uh, channel basically uh, I have the standard solo and mute buttons uh, nice to have and of course stop play record um, loop and fast forward and fast backward so that is kind of self-explanatory I won't use much more time on that and there's not much more to say either um, if you go then to this fader here I will open so you can see more information here oh sorry just by accident um, if I move this around I will control the fader but it won't go automatically to do that I need to press this button here in the red label called motor if that is lighten up then this fader is motorized why the, the, the reason this function is here is because it is very practical to have a motorized fader but let's say you sit and you record um, something then you will not have this noise recorded so then you can deactivate the motorized faders so it won't move while you record for instance so it's kind of uh, practical in that sense it does not make a lot of sound but as you know with microphones it will get heard anyway um, here you can jump around between the tracks uh, and you will be able to jump in portions of a tracks so you can only go a tracks ahead here and then it will stop uh, to go to the next eight you need to press the bank button so go to the next bank and then you are on channel 9 to 16 so on. and you can lock so you don't get much disturbance in, in case uh, the top button here we will return to that later on um, when we are on this fader here we have the volume and we have if we press the pan button over the side where it says pan we can also use this button to pan which is practical um, if you don't like that kind of setup we can also uh, flip them uh, in the red section we have a button here called flip if I press that one now we have changed place so this will be the pen and this will be the volume and now you can see this is motorized because if I move this down and press flip again to go back it will automatically go in place neat function um, so that's basically it for the kind of uh, standard control uh, let's go into the layers so the red layer here uh, we have the first button which is a flip we have read and write the standard functions um, we have a sense button which I haven't figured out what to do quite yet. Hmm, don't know. Oh. Oh, that was another button. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, that one I can't help you with because I don't understand it. Um, we have a edit button which open the channel settings. We have a project button which will open the project. Uh, win window and we have a mixer which means that if you're in the mixer you can press project and if you're on the project you can press the mixer and so on and we have the motorized fader on and off that's basically it 
for the red leather layer. Uh, the green one is still a bit, bit of a mystery to me. Um, don't think it's much use in Cubase. I may be wrong, but I haven't figured it out yet. So we'll just jump straight to the blue la layer. Um, we, for instance, have, um, uh, let's go back to the project. Um, we have left and right locator. So if I press the left here, I will go to the left locator. If I press right, I'll go to the right locator. And I have a punch in button for recording. Uh, down to the left here, I can choose or, or toggle between uh, various selection here. I have the um, here I have the, the beat, so beat bar um, and, oh, so, sorry, bar, beat, division, and sample rate, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and we have the one I use the most, which is, which is 70, uh, where you have uh, minutes, frames, seconds, and, and so on. So this is nice for, for instance, for, for film scoring. Um, and also, as you see, I can, when, when I uh, use a scrub here, I can go frame by frame, which is really nice if you do kind of trying to find hit points in, in the film or if you do uh, sound design or whatever, you can get really good control and actually going frame by frame. Uh, and I haven't much, ha haven't had much problem with this. I, I, I like this uh, quite well. It, it works for me at least. Uh, and we can also go to previous selection, and we can add stuff in in some commands. Uh, for instance, if I open up the markers track, I can go to some place, for instance here, and I can press add. Then we'll add a marker, uh, which I can call hello. I can go a bit forward or use this one, and I can add another one, and I can go back and forth between them. So to the previous one or the next one. That's kind of nice. That is the blue layer. Uh, the purple layer here. Um, is still a bit of a mystery to me. Uh, we have the instrument and we have the master, um, which doesn't work, apparently, uh, to me. And if I go to the kind of Mackey control uh, map that we looked at, uh, it also says that it's not basically implemented. So that is kind of, for instance, to a button you could change in your user in the user map, uh, if you go to the icon uh, software and make your own, you could, for instance, change those to something else if you would like. Um, moving on, let's say we have a couple of solo tracks. We can press the solo defeat to take them away. Also down here we have uh, for the project, we have save, we have undo, um, and we have redo. So, for instance, you, you, you want to save the project, you press save, and uh, the, the save function will come up. Uh, or if you did something that you regret, you can press undo. Or, if you want to redo it, press redo. And you can also revert to an early saved version of the project. Um, the final button here, the shift button, uh, is used to access extra layers of information. So for instance, uh, when we looked at the uh, stuff here, we can add your own controls in the yellow le level. You have the F1, F2 that we looked at, but we also have shift plus F1 that accesses a second layer here. So 
you don't just have these eight buttons, you have 16 buttons. So what you do then is you go to the purple layer, you press shift whilst pressing yellow, and then you click on the uh, stuff you want to do. Um, and you do the same thing to get back again. So that's kind of neat. Then you, if you don't have the possibility of having a tablet or something to, to add your own controller, you have 16 uh, user-defined controllers there. Um, okay, moving on. Now it's time to turn to this section here. So I'm going back, I'm going to open the mixer and uh, we're going to look at uh, my favorite here actually, which is the EQ section. What I do then is I go to this button where it says EQ, press that one, and then we can actually control the four bands of this EQ uh, on this section here. So you have first band, second band. If you press this five to eight here, you will access the third band and the fourth band. Uh, and this button has two layers. One, we just uh, turn it, and the other one, when you press it and then turn it, then you will access a, a, a different layer. So for instance here, uh, I can press this one to activate. Uh, just going to find my channel there. Now you can see that my fourth channel here is activated. Um, and doing that, I can press again to deactivate it. If I just turn this around, you'll see that I will go to the first thing here and kind of access the decibel. The next pot, I can access the frequency. And if I press it and then twist it again, I will access the Q. And the same functions for, for the rest. So for instance, if I take this up a little bit and something like that, or something like this. And the next one we have access and the third band, which we can swipe and say, okay, do something about that frequency. And if I press this again, five to eight, we go down to the second uh, over here and the final one for instance so that is kind of a neat function so you press eq and you use this one and that one um, you can also use this for plugins at least so they say so you go to the insert here uh, and I press plugins, then I can choose the plugins here, just twisting this around. And when I found my plugin, for instance, um, the destroyer, I can just wait and it opens up, activated. With this said, um, there are some videos online on how to use this function, but as I usually use third-party plugins, I haven't really found out how to use this well. And basically I use so much time figuring out how to do it that I, I really don't bother. It, it's much easier to do it with, with, the, with the pointer on my computer or with my other controller. So you, you can do stuff with this one and with this one, but I think they are very in, in, in practical for, for my use at least. Maybe there's someone out there really love them and uh, then, then good for you. Uh, but with that said, I the, the EQ function is what I 
really appreciate with this one. Um, that's basically it. That's my user user introduction to how I use my Icon Platform Nano with my Cubase. So thank you for tuning in and just feel free to hit like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff that everyone always says. And just let me know if you have any requests for me to for tutorials in the future. So thank you for stopping by. Cheers.